Good morning, everyone. Today I wanted to do a how-to video on how I do my uh, balloon dips with my nitrile gloves. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions lately on what mediums I use um, and how I mix my paints. So I'm just gonna go over my supplies really quick. Um, I just have my canvas here. This is a nine by 12 canvas. I have a uh, pouring medium, which I use a uh, Sargent Art Gloss Medium. I buy this in the gallon sizes because I use so much of it. It is um, an acrylic gloss. You can use it as a varnish or a medium. So because it is glossy, um, your final output will be really nice and shiny. Uh, but I like the consistency of this and I like the way that my paint uh, mixes up with this. So um, I just get this in the gallons off of Amazon, but you can buy it in other sizes. I have just a small amount of water. I have my paints. They are all acrylic paints. I use different brands of paints. Um, right now, today I'm going to be using some Liquitex Basics, some craft paints, and then some Blick acrylics. Uh, I just have a couple of different size cups for how I'll be for uh, mixing up my paints. I use just some really small cups for each of my colors because I don't need that much paint for this. I use some sponge brushes to smooth out my base coat, so I just have one of those handy. And then I have my stir sticks. Uh, these are just wooden craft sticks. And then, of course, my gloves that I'll use for my dip. So for this consistency, I keep my paint a little bit thicker um, than I normally would for other techniques because I don't want it to um, move very much. I also found that if I use Floetrol, sometimes my base coat will take over the colors. So that's why I stopped using Floetrol for the dips. So I'm just taking some of my white paint. It's in just a little tub. Um, and then I have, I'm not really good with measurements. <laughs> I have probably about an ounce of paint. Um, and then I just start adding my medium. Put it here. So I use more medium. I'm probably using about three to four parts medium to one part paint. And I'm just going to start stirring that together. And then once I have this mixed up, I will add my water and like I said I just add a small amount of water uh, I don't need too much for this technique a lot of time with this type of painting is just spent um, stirring and mixing your paint <laughs> so with just the paint and the medium it's a really nice thick consistency, so I'm going to start adding a little bit of water. Um, I only add a small amount at a time, probably a few teaspoons to a tablespoon, and then I stir that in and then um, decide if I want to add more water or not. Um, so I don't measure out water and then pour it in. Um, I find that each brand of paint has a different consistency, so some are thicker, some are thinner, if you're using the same amount of water for each one, you could wind up with um, a mixture that's too thin because your paint was thinner when it comes out of the tube. So I just kind of, um, you know, over time, based on testing this out, um, I've just kind of figured out that small amounts of water and then incorporating them just until it's the consistency that I want is how I do mine. And actually that is pretty good. So you do get a nice stream of paint off your stick. But I don't use a lot of my base coat, just enough so that my other colors will kind of form my um, flower shape that I'm going for when I'm doing my dip. So my base coat is good. And now we are going to do a couple of other colors. Um, and one thing I do is kind of mix my own shades of colors. Uh, I like to have, um, for some of my flowers, I start with the um, 
lighter color in the middle and then I do rings of the darker colors around the outside. So my lightest color is going to be one, it's a folk art paint, it's called parchment. It's a really, really light beige color. And then I have a couple of peach colors. Um, one of them I might add a little bit of white to to lighten it up. And then I also have some black and pyrrole red paint. I'm going to mix these together to make a dark burgundy color. So I'm just going to put in some of my red and then just a small amount of the black paint. Um, I would say use very small amounts of the black, start mixing it together, see what your shade looks like, and then determine if you want to add more. Oh, there it goes. Come on. There we go. So I just have a small amount in there. And the red and the black create this really nice burgundy. And I'm going to add just a little bit more red, but this will be a nice dark color for the outside. And then again, I'm going to add some of my medium and you can incorporate just small amounts at a time, add one or two tablespoons, stir it together. The medium is white in the container, but it dries clear. So when you start stirring it into your paints, uh, your paints will be a lighter color. And then as they dry, they will darken up. Okay, so now I'm just going to add my water. a really nice consistency nice and smooth not too thin so for my next colors I'll mix up a little bit of the parchment shake it up just a little bit and then I'll do a couple of different shades of peach This craft paint is another folk art. It's called Fire Coral. So I'm going to leave one of them as is, and then I'm going to add a little bit of white paint to the second one just to lighten it up a tiny bit. We'll add our mediums and mix those together and then work on the dips. So again, you can really adjust the shades of your paint if it's too dark. You can add some white to lighten it up. So I've got a nice lighter pink color versus that slightly darker peach. Okay, we'll just add a little bit of our medium. If you wanna be more precise with your measurements, um, you could always get a small food scale um, and actually use that to weigh everything so that you know if you want the same um, amount every single time you're doing your paintings you can do that uh, I just use different mediums and different consistencies for almost every single technique that I do so I could measure out for if I'm doing dips all the time do the same amount for dips but my paints are much thicker for the dips than let's say if I'm doing a Dutch pour um, and then my consistency for something like my airbrush pour is the thinnest that I do. And that gets very, very thin uh, because I want the airbrush to be able to move the paint around. So for me, it's all based on what technique I'm doing. That's how I decide how I'm going to mix up my paints, uh, what mediums I'm going to use, and how thick my consistencies will be. That is just the medium and the paint, and it's running right off my stick. So again, like I said, um, some of them you may not even need to add any water to. So this one I'm gonna leave as is. Um, this one might be the same. This was that parchment color. This one, because I added that white paint, which was a lot thicker, this one will need a little bit of water. 
literally just like two teaspoons, probably not even that much. So very small amount, mix it in, see what your consistency is like. If you add too much water, you can always add in a little bit more paint or a little bit more medium. Uh, some people also use glue as a medium, which is obviously nice and thick. You could always add a little bit of glue to it. Uh, I don't use glue very often. But that one, also very nice consistency. All right, so four colors along with my white mixed up. I'm going to just put them in my order of how I'm going to pour them. I have a lot of white left over, so I can use this in another dip or um, I can always thin it down if I'm going to do another painting. So just save your paints for later. Um, if you have them left over, you can definitely use them in other pours. Or if I had more coasters, I could make some coasters out of them. But I am in the process of moving. <laughs> So by the time you see some of these videos, I will be driving across country and I have lots of stuff packed up right now. So I like to start with my one of my lightest colors first. So I'm just going to use the parchment in the middle. And I also like to leave some negative space. So most of the time when I do this, I run my flowers down the middle of the canvas. And I call them flowers because for the most part to me, that's what they look like. Um, sometimes they look like butterflies, which is fun, but I like this specific style of the dip technique because of the fact that you get a really nice um, abstracty flower design. So I have my parchment down and then I just take my next color and just circle it around that first one. And you can use as much or as little of each color as you want. And then I'm going to take my next darkest color, which is that peach, that darker peach without the white in it. And then my last color, I'm going to do that really dark burgundy. I think that's enough. If we have, you could always put like another flower here or another one there. I'm gonna leave it as is for now and see what it looks like once I dip it and then decide if I wanna add more. So I just take my glove, blow it up. Um, when I'm dipping, I hold the corner that you blow into and then I hold the fingers so that they don't get in the way of your dip. So I'm holding it like this and then I just gently push down. So I'm gonna start with this one, down and up and look at that. That is beautiful. And then you can just wipe your paint off, reuse it. So I had the side that I dipped on, you could always flip it and use the other side of your glove. You can always rinse these off too and just keep on reusing the same glove over and over. So then I just go down. They all get a slightly different shape and then you can switch the way that you're doing it. You can dip this way instead of this way. Um, it will change your design up a little bit. It'll change the style of your flower just a tiny bit. And then this one. Those are beautiful. Those colors look really, really nice together. I'm gonna do this one. And then we will do this last one. Oh, that looks pretty. Do I wanna try and do... fill in those corners just a little tiny bit. So like I said, you can just rinse your glove off, go ahead and reuse it. So this turned out really, really nicely. I'm going to let it dry and then I will show you a picture all dry. Uh, this is the shape that I love with these. This is the style that I go for when I do these dips. Uh, as you can see, if you don't ring your color all the way around, you get some really nice 
um, petal shapes of like one color and then a petal shape of the other color. So you could really change up how you're doing um, your puddles with this technique to get some really different shapes, designs, um, colors, leaf patterns. In one previous video, I also did some green for some leaves, and so I'm still kind of testing that out to see what you can do for that. But um, I hope this video was helpful. I know it's quite a bit longer than normal, but I tried to go through just from start to finish. Like I said, I've had uh, questions on how I do this because people have tried it and they're not getting the same results. So anytime I do a dip, this is what I do. I use the Sargent Art Gloss Medium, water paint and then I keep it a little bit thicker so that my flowers hold their shape if it's too thin they'll move and they won't uh, dry well so I hope you guys like this video let me know what you think down in the comments below I'm going to do some other how-to videos if there's a technique that you want to see let me know and I'll add that to my list of videos that I'm working on um, but I just kind of want to do some tutorials uh, a little bit more so that you guys get a better understanding of how I mix my paints for different techniques. Um, hopefully help you if you're having issues with your own paintings not turning out the way that you want them to. So I will have more in the future, but we will let this dry and I'll get some good pictures of it at the end. Don't forget to hit that like button and um, don't forget to subscribe. I do put out three videos a week, so I hope to see you in the next one and thank you so much for watching today.